Well, good evening. Welcome to Davida Stampin' Spot. I'm trying to find the picture so I can see what you're seeing. There we go. All right, thanks for joining me. Hey, Paula, it's nice of you to stop by tonight. So I want to show you how to take a an image that you stamp and alter it so that it looks different just with a few cuts. So I'm starting with several stamp sets. I'm using snow front, waterfront, my meadow, and mountain air. So four different stamp sets that we have that create a scene, something like this here. So let's start. We're gonna start with some misty moonlight for our mountains. And when I have a big stamp like this, I like to turn it upside down and apply the ink. And then I want some shadows of mountains behind it. So I'm going to just slide it up and over just a little bit to get some mountains behind there. Notice I didn't re-ink it, I only inked it once. Then we're going to put some trees in front of it. And we're going to use, these are from the Mountain Air set. I love this set. And I'm using Garden Green for this. We're gonna stamp our trees. And if I have a white spot, I like to kind of go back and fill in just with a little bit of a shadow. Now we're going to stamp our gazebo. Let's hope I did that trees high enough. All right, so there's our gazebo. And then I want a walking trail with a bridge. And I have made, when you see the final project tonight, you're going to see I made this for one of my family members, but they haven't received it yet, so I can't tell you who it was. But I wanted them to have a scene of some walking trails. So I'm going to stamp my bridge in soft suede, which is the same ink that I did my gazebo. And I want my walking bridge to have a gravel path. So I'm going to take some Sahara sand and I'm going to use one of the images from Waterfront, I think it is, that's this right here, Ooh, that light's right there, this here that works really get well for a trail. In one of the others you're going to see this and I use that for some of the water. So I'm going to use Sahara sand for my walking path. And I want it to go from the gazebo to the bridge and then off, oops, had something on my, uh, that's what happens when you have some something stuck on your stamp. All right, there we go, like that. Then I wanna add some water for my lake. So I'm going to use balmy blue for that. And I want the water to come underneath the bridge so that there's a reason there's a bridge in the picture. So I'm going to take balmy blue ink and put my water under the bridge. Have to be really careful. My camera connection is not working very well and I'm afraid if I bump my stand, I'm gonna mess up my picture. That's why I was a little late tonight. I couldn't get it to recognize my camera. All right, so I want quite a bit of water here, so I'm gonna go back like that. And then I want the water on the other side as well. And because we have the bars there, we don't have to be quite as picky. I did have somewhere, where did I hide it? I did have a bridge with that I'd already cut out, but it looks like I'm gonna to have to do it again. So I just take a post-it note Stamp my bridge, doesn't matter what color it's in. Use my scissors to cut. And 
And I'm not too worried about getting really close because I just want to protect, protect the middle of it. Hope you guys had a good Christmas. Definitely a strange year for holidays. Kit and I were just commenting as we listened to it rain outside. It's so weird that it's warm enough that we're getting rain the week after Christmas instead of snow. We had the ice and snow earlier today and now we're getting the rain. So I'm going to attach my bridge over there and then take the water and I want it to go about like that. And I want it to have a real varied look. So you notice I flip my stamp both directions. All right, so there's a little bit there that I'm not real happy with. So I'm going to grab my marker with my balmy blue and fill in here just a little bit. And we'd be able to see in between these slats. So if I if I'd been able to use the one I had cut out, I cut out this part here so I could have stamped it. But then what I decided to do is I wanted to make it look like it was kind of like rushing water. So I just took the marker and I just put some little lines in it and just brought some more depth to the water. So I just want it to be kind of a me meandering water like that. Then I wanted to add just a little bit of wildlife to it. So I'm going to go back to the soft suede and this, uh, let's see, which one is it? The snow front has two deer. So I'm going to grab the deer and stamp them. I will tell you that when you play with this, you do want to um, give yourself some practice time. And um, keep in mind, you want to do your bigger images first because you can always fill in the smaller ones. So then I just felt like around my water was kind of uh, naked, that it just needed a little bit more. So I decided to use there's trees in the snow front. There's three different sizes here. So I'm using these three different little ones here to add. You could come back with the brown trees if you wanted. The fun thing with these stamp sets is there are so many options. You can bring in uh, tree tree bark, trees that don't have leaves on them right now. You can do your evergreen trees like this. Um, so you can just do a lot of creating however you want it to look, which is really fun. And then I wanted some up here like that. So see how fun that is? And it was really pretty simple. The trickiest part's probably doing the water, but I Oh, I know the other thing I did. Um, this is something that's coming out in our new catalog that starts next week. And these are our new um, blending brushes. And oh my gosh, I love this. So I'm going to, oh, I got to do my sun first. I knew I had yellow here for a reason. We're going to put a sun behind the mountains. I'm going to take my post-it note. put my sun behind the mountain and then I want to give it just a little bit of blue sky so I'm going to open the balmy blue again unfortunately I don't have very many of these brushes yet so you're going to see it's got a little bit of green on it but I think I've got the green out of it so what's really neat is you want to start with these on your scratch paper and then just gently blend them into onto your paper and look how nice and soft that image is Oh, I just love these. Can't wait to get some more. All right. And then I want to leave this white because it's a snowy, snowy spot. Okay. So what I could do now is I could take that image and I could just mount it on 
a piece of Sahara sand like that. And then of course, trim that off and then put it on a piece of the midnight misty moonlight cardstock. And of course, I've cut that Sahara stand in, so it could be like that. But this week, as I was playing with this, I thought, you know, you can make it look so different so easily. So let me show you what I decided to do. So I brought my paper cutter in. I cut, I hope I grabbed the right piece of paper here. I'm hoping this is four and a fourth or four and, oh, it's a little bit short. All right, so the original paper I had for this was four and, good grief, let me think here. So it was one and a half, three, and then it should be four. Oh, I did do it right. Okay, so one and a half. Goodness, I get out of school a few days and my brain shuts off. All right, and then we're gonna do one and a half again. And it gives us three separate pieces. So now I could take and go back to this Sahara sand and spread these out. And it just gives it a different look. Looks like you went to a little more work and it just gives it a little bit different image there like that. So I did that on one of them. So let me show you how that turned out when I glued it down. So this is one of those step it up projects. So here's the first one. I just stamped it. And this one here, you can see I did the river in two spots like that. Then I decided, okay, well, we'll cut it apart like I just did. So it looks like that. And then I thought, well, it would be fun if we spread them a little bit more. So I, same size pieces here, but then I backed them with the blue behind it. So that's kind of like three picture windows, like you're looking out outside from inside your house with the three. So I thought, well, I wonder what it would look like if we did six. So here I divided it. So you're looking out a six paned window to the different images outside. Let me bring that up a little closer so you can see it. So it's the same picture, but I just kept changing it just a little bit. And this all happened because of one of the gifts I wanted to make for someone in my family. So I took a strip of Whisper White cardstock. And if you're a Stampin' Up! person, you know our Whisper White's going away. And we're going to start calling it Basic White. No details on that, but once I do know, I will let you know. So I'm going to go back this time and I'm going to cut, or not cut, I'm going to stamp a long strip. So I'm going to stamp like that, bring it up just a little bit like that, ink it again. I keep forgetting I need to move it up on my desk a little bit. I have to admit I'm enjoying this week. We don't have school this week, so I get to be home all week and I'm really glad for that. All right, so we need just a little bit more to stamp that. So there's my mountain range. And the nice thing when you do the mountain range is you're not, you don't want it straight anyway. So you don't have to worry about a real straight mountain range. You can just kind of let it meander a little bit. Now I'm going to come back with my trees. And before I do that, I want to stamp my gazebo because I don't want him getting trees in his roof. I've had trouble with that. So we're going to stamp the gazebo like that. And then I'm just going to take just a piece of paper. And I better use post-it note. And we're going to cover him up just a little bit here. All right, and we can come back and fix it. Normally I would cut, cut out a template there, but you don't want to watch me cut. So I'm going to just kind of cheat a little bit. So yeah, it did that, but we can come back and touch it up. So now we're going to work across here. I don't like a lot of white in between. So as you can see, I'm just coming back with just a little bit of light ink. All right, 
So what I want to do here is because I didn't make my mask quite close enough. I need to come back. Try again here. Would have been better to make my mask. Thought I had that done. But then when I had trouble with my camera not wanting to work, <laughs> we ended up with green down there anyway. So I'll have to show you how I fixed those the first time I made this. All right, so this time my, my uh, walking path is going to go all the way across there. So I'm going to stamp my bridge. spread out a little bit like that. And we're going to come back. Where did I put my walking trail? There we go. Isn't it sad? You can be think you're so organized. And I don't know about you, but then I can never find my stamps. All right, so here's my walking trail again. And I want it to go from the gazebo to the bridge. So there's my trail. Now I want to come back with the water. And because this one is longer, I'm going to use this fun little swirl here. You know, I didn't go up high enough. Maybe I won't. On my other one, I did my mountains high enough I could put my water in there. We're going to have to go with this one instead, I think. So we're going to come back again. And my bridge. So we're just about to the cool part. Bear with me, we're getting close. And the nice thing with the water is that you can just kind of make it look however you want it. So there we go. Got a little bit closer that time. <laughs> and you know, when you do it in front of a camera, it never works as well as it did when it was just me in here all by myself. All right, so I gathered, brought that in. That, And then I want the water to go behind the gazebo. And if we bring it down like this, we'll be able to see it in between the slats. We'll go like that. There, like that. We'll add in our deer. And the reason I want different things all the way across here is because we're going to cut this strip. And when we cut it, we want to have different focal points in each piece that we're cutting. So and across. Now oh, there's my other trees. All right. Here. And that should do it. Oh, no, I want one over here. This is actually going to be my front piece. So I want it to look really nice. There's my other tree. I'm going to put all three trees there like that. All right, I'm going to close up my ink because if I don't, I'll get ink where I don't want it. And we have one last thing to stamp, which is our sun. So this is real similar to what I did before. I'm just doing a very long strip this time. And I actually had a lot of fun with this, doing all the different pieces. And the funny thing was, is I'd come up with an idea and then I'd come back and later think, oh, I could use that piece, I could use that piece. All right, so I'm gonna get these out of my way. Bring in the paper cutter and I'm going to start cutting these strips. So I want to cut it so that this first piece is my front piece 
So we're going to cut it at two and a half. So you can see it. There we go. All right, so two and a half. And another two and a half. And we're going to do two strips of two. And I should have two and a half left. Yep. All right. Now what I did was I took a piece of misty moonlight paper and we're going to score it at three inches. Five and a half. I apologize to I'm having a hard time keeping it in the picture with my um, camera acting so funny. And then we did it at eight. So three, five and a half and eight. And I showed this, oh, I don't know, a long time ago, this gift card holder. But I just think it's so fun with this kind of mural type picture. So I'm going to fold. So it goes valley, mountain valley so see it looks like I'm make it so it looks like this like that i'm going to take a classic label punch Ooh, that light there we go and we're going to punch out Actually, I think we'll glue it down first. I've tried a bunch of different glue options, and I've really found that the um, glue dots probably work the best. So I'm going to take glue dots, and I'm going to put them on the four corners of one of these inside pieces. It's hard for you to see, but I've got one here one there and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So it's going to hold the middle two pieces together. Okay, so we're going to close it up like that. Now we're going to take the label, classic label punch. We're going to put it in so that the point the edge of the paper is right at the point. And what I like about using this is it gives you a starting point, and then if you need to make it a little bit bigger, you can. And here you can see I didn't line it up quite right. So just take your scissors and go straight over and then trim it. So we're making a pocket so that, find my little card here. Oh my gosh, I thought I had everything ready tonight. Here it is. So that a gift card will fit in here. And if it doesn't quite fit, then you're going to come back with your scissors and all you have to do is do the same angle as the punch. I was putting money in here, and so the money didn't need to be quite as tall, but I realized it would work as a gift card holder too. So see, now it'll slide right in there like that. So now we're going to decorate this. So here's your front, and I wanted ribbon, so I cut a piece of ribbon from the Misty Moonlight ribbon. And this ribbon is the exact same width as our tear tape. And you know, if you use your tear tape, it's going to hold it in place really well. So we'll take a piece of tear tape. And to me, it's more important that you get it lined up better on the back than the front, because the front we're going to cover up. So we're going to go over here, line 
that straight up. <laughs> oh, goodness. Today I was using tear tape and every piece just pulled off perfect. Tonight it takes three tries. All right, so there's the back. And then we're going to do the same thing here on the front. Just a piece of tear tape across the middle. And the reason I do the back is I hate it when that ribbon just flops all over the place. You can use glue dots, you can use tear tape, any of them will work. So I was in the mood for tear tape tonight. All right, so there's that. So now we're going to go back to our pieces. And I told you this was gonna be the front, okay? So we'll take, and I cut one. Here it is. Like this. It's gonna go on the front just like that. And what I had to do here is where you can see the screen is I stamped another one on a piece of scratch paper, cut it out and just put it over the top because I forgot um, to cut, cut my mask out. Okay, so then you're gonna open it up and I'm just gonna show you here, this will go here, this will go here, and you're gonna flip it on over, this here, with this here and each one has the frame behind it so i'm going to show you my completed project because we're getting a little long here so here's what i created so you can see here's my gazebo on the front and open it there's the bridge with the water and then the trees over here flip it over here the two deer with the trees and it is the perfect size to put money in and then what i did is i even took the uh, ornate labels and made just a little piece of paper so i could write on there here's some money for your gift and i told them what i was hoping they'd use their money for so isn't it fun to see how you can go from a solid piece like this get this out of the way so there's just one big piece then split into three split into three with the mat behind it or split into six or you can turn it into a mural so that as the person opens your card the picture is nice and long through the whole thing so that's my idea for you tonight i'd love to see some of your creations so if you have um get a chance to try something like this Please show up to me. I would love to see what you're creating. Hey, Julie, it's good to see you tonight. Hope you guys are having a great uh, week after Christmas and before New Year's. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. I do have a hostess code. Now my paper's all messed up here. This is the last week for this host code. Here, this makes it look a little better. If you order um, and it's less than 150, if you'd use my host code, I'd sure appreciate it. It uh, helps me get supplies for my classes and my uh, videos like tonight. <coughs> so hope you're having a great week and I will see you next Tuesday. Thanks for stopping by.